to him with clothed in tongues. Well, just like fire shut up in their bones, they were all filled with that Holy Ghost. Well, they spoke in other tongues, and they the gave the their most. Well, I wish somebody's soul would catch on fire, catch on fire, catch on fire. I wish somebody's soul would catch on fire. Jesus, we worship you today, Lord. We want our souls to be caught on fire this morning with the Holy Ghost today, Jesus. Hallelujah. We just worship you today, Lord. What a wonderful God that you are today, Lord. Thank you for waking us up this morning with a beautiful day today, Lord, to come to your house to worship you today, Jesus, in freedom today, Lord. We thank you today, God. We open up our hearts and our ears to receive that word today that you have to give to us today, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, just raise your hands and worship Him today. We come to your house to praise your name today, Jesus. To praise you today, God. We thank you for the stone in our soul this morning, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're worthy of all of our praise today, God. Of all of our honor today, Jesus. We just thank you today, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, come on now. But he did not yes, God. despair. He started over again. And I bless the day he did not throw the clay away. Sing it, everybody.
Aren't you glad this morning? this morning aren't you glad that he didn't throw the clay away hallelujah are you glad he didn't throw the clay away hallelujah thank you lord hallelujah let's give jesus a praise yeah. this morning hallelujah thank you, you lord. so good to see everybody you can be seated hallelujah this time let's make welcome brother jason give him a hand Good to be back in the house of the Lord this Sunday morning. Amen. And good to see everyone. Thank you for being with us here at Solid Rock Church this morning. And Amen. How, how, know, how, how many knows it feels good to be in your church this morning? Amen. And when I say your church, amen, if, you, if you're visiting or if, you're just, if you've been coming here a while, amen, it's, it's yours. Amen. And I've said this before, but how many, you know, likes to take care of what's yours? Amen. And, and, and this morning, this is our church amen the same as your home do you do upkeep on your home amen um how invested are you this morning in your church amen and, and we're blessed and i don't know about you but i care about the things at home you know i care about my home amen and, and if it's out of place outside it bothers me i want to i want to do something about it amen I, I say that this morning that i hope you feel invested in what's yours this morning this is our church amen and Amen. We, we're blessed to have pastors, but it's it's our church. Amen. And and God has placed you here. And and, and who's not going to take some, care of something God has given you or placed you? Amen. I believe we'd be dishonoring God not to, amen, give something back to the house of God. Amen. I don't want to be a Judas. I don't want to always receive and never be willing to give nothing back. Amen. Lord, touch my heart that I'm not like that this morning, Father. And a uh, very familiar passage this morning I'll bring back. It said in Malachi 3. And eight, will a man rob God? Amen. And how I many know oh, God has kept us and blessed us all week, so much time, so many, so many times, so many things we didn't even see. But I don't want to be a robber. Amen. It says that in verse nine, it says, "You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me." God, help me not to rob you of what you've given me. God didn't say, "Bring me your paycheck." He said, "Give me a, I mean, a fraction." I feel the Spirit of the Lord. He said, give me a fraction, amen, just to show me that you're willing, amen, that you know where your blessings come from. Praise God. How many, I mean, God, don't, God wants us to have a willing heart. Can God trust us this morning? It says, bring all you tithes into my store as they may be meat in my house. I know you guys know this, but I, I love where it says, prove me therewith if I will not open the windows of heaven in verse 10 and pour you out a blessing that you not have room enough to receive it. How many believe that? Amen. Everything we have become 
comes from the Father. Amen. Everything. Everything. You think, oh, Brother Jason, I worked 60 hours. God gave you the health to work 60 hours. Kept you all week long. Amen. Oh, Lord, don't, don't, don't pass up an opportunity to bless the house of God this morning. Alfred and Takers, come. We'll get ready. Amen. I want to encourage you, amen, to be a giver this morning. Encourage you. Boy, I tell you, I'm going to say this one more time. I said it a million times. Amen. It's easy. It's easy to pay tithes on $20, $100 a week. Amen. But can God trust you to bless you with triple that amount? Can God trust you, amen, to pay... To pay tithes on a thousand dollars a week, amen. Or will Satan trick you and say, "Oh, you you didn't really, you didn't really make that"? Or don't let Satan rob you this morning, amen. Reach your hands this way. Let's ask the Lord's blessing. Father, we thank you this morning, Lord. Lord, open up our eyes and our heart to see what you've given us and trusted us with, Lord. Let us be good stewards of what you've given us, Lord. Thank you for the house of God you've given us. Lord, give me a heart to invest back into my church, Father. Give me a heart, Lord, to see what you've given us, Lord. And what I do so, Lord, I know without a shadow of a doubt you will bless and multiply, Lord. Oh, Father God, send the rain upon the givers this morning, Lord. Send your blessings, Father God. We sow into the kingdom. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. you again and again. 
And I know it's not much fit for a king. It's set for my heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Play softly, lift up on the board. Everybody in this building this morning, if you're ashamed of him, he said he'd be ashamed of you. Could you imagine standing before God and God said, I'm ashamed of you because you was ashamed of me here of all that I did for you. This shyness that some the devil could use on you young people, well, I don't want to be a fanatic. I don't want to be like, if you're ashamed of him, he said he'd be ashamed of you. How many of that's in your Bible? Wouldn't it be awful when the Lord, you stand before the Lord, and he says, I'm ashamed of you. You disgraced me all down there. You never told nobody about me. You always wanted to hide in the secret. You didn't want to do nothing for the Lord because you were shy. But there's a line in you, either it's godly or it's worldly. And I can make you mad in 30 seconds and you as bold as a line and you'll smart your mouth off and tell me what you think. Don't tell me you're shy. Because I don't believe a word of it. But we need a bonus for God like that. Amen. The devil's hoodooing people and they don't even realize they've been hoodooed. Amen, Brother Wayne. And can you imagine... What could you bring a king that owns everything? Can you bring him gold? Could you bring him money, houses, lands? What could you give God? But you know what he does desire? A heart that'll sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we just sing that one more time this morning? Lift your voices and sing it. Tell that devil you're getting out of that shyness because you're not shy at a game. Young girls. If Braxton's playing ball, y'all not shy. No. You carry on like something ain't got a bit of sense. You go to church and you couldn't pry your mouth open with a, with a, with a pry bar. Don't tell me you're shy. Some of you here, some of you here hollered your kids all week. You go to church and you act like you got mute. I'm preaching good to every one of us. Amen. We can, go, we can watch ball game on TV, and three doors down, they can still hear you holler. You go to church, and you don't open your mouth. Amen. I believe God is displeased with that. Amen. This ain't, I'm just asking you this morning, can you sing with all your heart one more time? Hallelujah. Don't be ashamed of him this morning. Don't be ashamed of him. Because, amen, I don't want him to be ashamed of me when I stand before God. And we don't even be ashamed of you. Amen. Let's sing it again. Come on, one more time. So I throw, throw up my hands, hands and I praise you again and again. Because all, all that, that I have is a hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I know it's not much. I've got nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. So I throw up my hands and I praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, a hallelujah. And I know it's not much, got nothing. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. I've got one response. I've got just one move. With my arms stretched wide, I will worship you. And praise you again, again and again. again. Cause all, all that, that I have is a hallelujah, a hallelujah. And I know it's not much, I've got nothing else fit for a king. Except for my heart singing hallelujah, a Don't you get show me 
Cause you got Come on, the sing it, church. Come on, sing it, hell. Get up and praise the Lord. Oh, yes. So come on, my soul. Come Don't on, you get shy. Lift up your song. song. Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. So come on, my soul. Don't you get shy. You got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Oh, sing it again. Sing it. Let your voice now. So come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Oh, come on. Let your voice. Just sing it. Let your voice. So come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs And get up and praise the Lord Oh, sing it again, sing it again yeah. So come on my soul Don't you get shy on me Lift up your song Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord Oh, come on, sing it now Sing that chorus So I don't Praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I know oh, it's not much. I've got nothing, nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart saying you How many don't want him to be ashamed of you this morning? Come on, raise your hands and love him. Hallelujah. Come on and love him right now. I don't want him ashamed of me, do you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give him another praise this morning. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's our king. Hallelujah. Let's give Brother Keith a hand. Make him welcome this morning. I know it's not much, but I have nothing else fit for a king this morning. I know we don't have much, there's nothing you give a king, but you can give you a hallelujah this morning. Yeah, I'm talking to every one of us. I see how the enemy tries to rob our young people. He tries to rob us of the goodness of God that he has for us this morning. But I want to give him a hallelujah. How I many I want to give him just a hallelujah this morning? Amen. And I know we all do it in different ways. And, and somebody can come up with some great act of wisdom, they'll say. And, well, I'm just not prepared to serve the Lord. I'm just not prepared for this. You should stay prepared. If any man asks you, you should be able to give him an answer. How many believes that this morning? Amen. This well, I, I need three weeks to get ready. You could miss God. Because sometimes God don't have three weeks for you. Amen. But God's a mighty good God. Give God one more shout of praise this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. You can be seated this morning. Amen. You can go to your Sunday school, but I asked uh, Brother Michael's class to stay with me this morning. I would like to Brother Michael's class to stay with me this morning. I want you to give all of our young people a good hand. Because the devil wants them at an earlier age. Some of us older folks, he can't, he can't do that to us. Amen. I want to say thanks, Sister Lisa, for our flyer this morning. It was very good. Amen. We've got some good sayings in it, so amen. Enjoy that. Pass it on to somebody else. 
Amen. I'm going to say God's a good God. Amen. Uh, the other day I had somebody to tell somebody that uh, I wasn't friendly because I didn't come by and shake their hand. And if you listen to a person like that and you can't understand who they are and what they are, you've got a lot of troubles in your life. You believe people that believe gossip? Somebody shout amen. Now, yesterday I seen, or I didn't see KK. Sister Jean and I were at a place and we didn't see you. Didn't see you at all. I don't know where he's even at. But KK seen us. Guess what she did? She came. And Isaac wasn't with her. She did it all on her own. So if I don't see you jump up, if service is done started and your hand has to be shaken, just come on up and shake it. Because that's a bunch of foolishness. And I want to preach to them because we're living the end time. We're living the time that Jesus is about to come. And people are acting foolish and childish over absolutely nothing and will not come to church because they didn't think the preacher was friendly enough. Now, I'm going to tell you, that's dangerous. And if you listen to people like that, you're going to be in trouble yourself. Now, I won't talk about that this morning. Amen. How many of that God's a good God? Now, sometimes, amen, I'll do my best to shake your hand and say hi, ever what. And sometimes I've got a one-track mind and I don't even know you in 50 miles of me. Y'all are the same way. So don't judge me till you judge yourself. Amen. So God's a good God this morning. But, you know, every now and then, you got to get the vacuum cleaner out and clean. Somebody shout hallelujah. But KK was so, she came over and spoke to us yesterday. And, well, you know, and I thought maybe she was with mom and daddy. I was going to get him to pay the bill if he was, but he wasn't. But he wasn't thanks a lot. Somebody shout hallelujah. But uh, that can happen, can't it, Brother Michael? Amen. But anyhow, but God's a good God this morning. And uh, how many of y'all have a life? Let me see your hands. How many of you live in trying to make a better life for yourself and, you know, just want to live? And the Bible said to occupy till he comes. And, you know, and sometimes, you know, we, we get so miffed and we act so childish over little bitty things that, uh, well, you know, he started two minutes after service. He didn't do this. He didn't do that. Change your britches. And grow up and act like somebody. Because you don't understand. Let me show you something. Daniel, put, put the picture of the foot up there this morning. Now, some of y'all got bigger needs than I got, greater needs than I got. It's okay. But every Wednesday for my near six months, I had to go have that done right there. They stick a three-inch needle in my foot. Now, sometimes I'd grab that handle that chair and I'd oh but I thought it was important enough to come on to church Wednesday night with my feet are hurting and when you use some of these little lame excuses you need to get over them I'm preaching pretty good this morning amen because I'm going to stand before God and blood will be on my hands if I don't tell you the truth now on Wednesday evening and that blood was, when they pull that needle out of somebody that blood would squirt out and I mean it would thaw like a toothache for hours I got that in both feet for my near six months. All went on Wednesdays. That hurt. Now, if I hadn't been a man and a half, I couldn't have stood it. <laughs> By the grace of God, somebody shout amen. Now, if you don't think that hurts, you go right over here to this doctor. Let them stick that in your feet. Now, I don't see people get it put in their eyes. I'll take the feet. Somebody shout amen. But... Sometimes we think if we can convince ourselves of certain things, it's okay. Amen. Now, uh, Daniel, would you put up one of those dilapidated houses up there? We're going to talk this morning. Now, look at that beautiful house. Something is wrong with that house. The roof looks good. 
Windows look good. That looks like a nice house. I believe I could live in that house. But what's wrong with that house? Well, I'll tell you what. He didn't have a lawnmower. That's part of the reason he didn't mow his yard. He didn't have a lawnmower. Y'all think a minute. I wonder why this guy has not mowed his house or his yard, excuse me. Huh? He don't care? Really? <laughs> You're telling the truth. You're telling the truth. But something is wrong with this. Now, wait a minute. We're judging the yard. And we're judging the house, but it's neither the house nor the yard that needs to be judged. It's the owner of that house that needs to be judged. It's something wrong with him to allow his beautiful house to get in that kind of shape. Now, that's not too bad. I'm, I'm going to say, well, God knows my heart. I hear that till I puke. Yeah, but your fruits tell what your heart is. Give me another picture of that, Daniel. Now, do you know what got that house like that? They started with their yard and one little thing here and one little thing there. Now, before we, I get into the scriptures, you've got a chance to exit the door if you think you can handle this. Give me another or two. Now, look at that. You say, well, that's just an old run-down house. It used not to be. Somebody vacated that house. You just go and give me another one or two there. You got another one there? Oh, you got three is all you got. Okay. You got one that's well manicured? Oh, man. How many could live there? How many believe it took a lot of work? To have a house look like that. How many of it took a lot of work to have a house look like that? Can I get a witness in the house? Got another one of them? Amen. Maybe that's too expensive for some of us. We'll, we'll, we'll step it down a notch. I think there's another one there. We got another one? That's all you got. I sent them to you. I must not have got them there. Amen. But you can see the yard's been mowed. It's been landscaped. It's been, it's been well taken care of. And... But you know a house that beautiful can become all grown over? How beautiful is your life to God this morning? How precious are you to the Lord this morning? And that's why I'm, uh, I, 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 I never want to be harsh, never want to be hateful. But amen. sometimes we need to get woke up. Sometimes we need awakening up in the hour that we're living in. Troubles on every side. And young people, you get ready to face a world. Now, y'all still on the mom and daddy's roof. Isaac, all of, I'm not just preaching on one or two. I'm preaching to every one of you. You still, But one day you're going to walk out of that world, and that world's going to slap you right in the face. That world's going to slap you right in the face. And mom and daddy ain't going to be able to help it. And you can get mad at the world if you want to, but it won't change nothing. Can I get a witness in here? Amen. And that goes for me. That goes for every one of us. Every now and then I get jolted. How many of y'all do? Amen. And especially, amen. Now watch this this morning. I, I want to show you some things that God showed me. Go with me to the book of Luke, amen, chapter number 21, amen. And, you know, uh, a lot of people have a lot of things. Tomorrow they're having the, uh, what is that thing, the, the solar eclipse. And I don't know what will become, what won't, but I know what God has shown me. Amen. But I want you to understand a couple things about this. Amen. Whether anything happens tomorrow, next week, next month, or next year, it is going to happen. And poor old Noah, the Bible called him a preacher of righteousness. And I tell you what, Noah only had one message. Now, you think you get tired of me. Noah only had one message for 120 years. It's going to rain. Judgment's coming. It's going to rain. Every time he got up to preach. You better get ready. It's going to rain. What else could he preach? You better get ready. It's going to rain. 
And one daddy looked up and said, son, don't you worry about that old fool. See that mountain up there? We go up on top of that mountain there. And if it even did rain, don't worry about that old fool. Then they begin to scoff him and make fun of him. You think Noah wasn't really cute in 120 years of preaching a brill and a boat out in the middle of a desert where there wasn't no water? He had never rained a drop on the face of this earth. Never dropped a, never a, a rain, one raindrop ever fell out of the sky. And Noah said it's going to rain. Wow. I'm going to tell you something. If I'd have been there, I probably wouldn't have believed it either. Don't sit there and act like you would have. You probably wouldn't have believed it either. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness in here? Now, I want, I want to say some things to you this morning, amen, because God is good, amen, and uh, I, I want to share this with you. Go, Daniel, you can go back now to Luke chapter 21, amen, and, and I want in verse number 25, and I want to share some things with you this morning, and I want it to be a blessing to you. I want it to be a help to you. I want it to, to touch your life, amen. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and up and upon the earth the stresses of nations. Now we're living right there right now. Right this very minute we're living. The stresses of nation. We're talking about turning our back on Israel after all these years. Now I'm going to tell you something. If America turns her back on Israel, I believe that's the last thread before the judgment of God is poured out upon America. We have done everything else. And with perplexity, that means confusion. You just, you just don't know what to do. And the seas and the wave, waves are rowing. And that really means tsunamis right there, what that's talking about. It means the water going beyond its boundaries. Men's hearts failing them for fear. For looking after those things which are coming on the earth. And the powers of heaven shall be shaken. We're living in a shaking time. And the Son of Man, and then shall the Son of Man coming in cloud with power and great glory. Now, when all this begins, it may, amen, this, thing, this is going to go on for a while. But in all of this chaotic things, amen, the Lord is going to appear. And when you see these things begin to come to pass, amen, amen. Now, what, what are these things that begin to come to pass? Back up, Dan. Now, I know there's always been, but we're living in a very, very, amen, time that, amen, they're, they're, they're not just 100 years apart, 50 years apart, amen. They're might near continuously somewhere. Back, back up one more verse. Now, what are these things when they've got men's hearts failing them? Amen. Looking after the things which shall come up on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. We're living in a very serious time. Amen. Now, I have people sometimes, won't you preach on the book of Revelation? I said, I can't get people to get, get into Matthew. Amen. 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 And, I, I, and I've studied out. Uh, go ahead now. Let's go ahead. Amen. We're going to be doing some Revelation preaching. But anyhow, then shall they see the Son of Man, son of man coming in clouds with power and great glory. I've got to hurry because I've got a lot to preach on. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption, or you've been redeemed, draweth nigh. Folks, we, you, better keep, you better keep looking. How, how many uh, came into church through the doors this morning? How many saw the snake over your head? You know there's a snake up over that door? How many seen that? I got one. It's rubber. It's a play snake. Anybody else see it besides Sister Rhonda? Because the crows and the birds are about there making the awfulest mess, carrying mud and everything. They have made the awfulest mess this week you've ever seen. And the only thing I try to keep them away is some kind of a varmint. So I put a snake above that door. And every one of y'all walked in here and didn't see that snake. I bet some of y'all walk out going, But it's up there, unless it fell down, it sinks down. Well, I've got some of y'all already paranoid. It only costs a dollar, folks. A dollar and a quarter, excuse me. It's not real. It's not real. But here's the thing. There's a lot of things you're in and don't even see it. Now, that's good preaching right there. You walked right in the mist, right under that thing to a point. 
And his tail's hanging down about that far on, on the ledge. Do you see it, Sister Lisa? No. No, he's up there. No, he's up, no, he's, he was up there yesterday. Yeah. He was there. <laughs> Somebody shout amen. Braxton, it's our. You don't have to, you don't have to go see it. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Some things just fit real good, don't they? Now watch this. Next verse. I've got to hurry here. He began to speak a parable of them saying, or a parable of them. Unto them a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. And when, the, and when they now shoot forth, you see and you know. You can look out through here and know that summer is nigh. Springtime's coming. Is that right? Now how many knows you can discern the times of the, the seasons, but we can't discern the time of the Lord coming? Amen. How many, how many really believe the Lord will literally come back to this earth? How many believe that there will be a rapture? And you'll either go or you'll be here. Amen. Next verse, please. Just keep going for me. So likewise, when you see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but God's word will not pass away. And take heed to yourselves. Take heed to yourself. Lest at any time your hearts be overcharged. That means in excessiveness. With subverting, that means eat, overeating, drinking. You know, so many people today are so depressed that they just eat, 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 eat. Because of that. And cares of this life. So that the day of the Lord will come up on you unaware. Just like that snake out there. For as a snare shall come up on all of them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Now watch this. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you be counted worthy to escape. Now what I want to preach on this morning you do not want to ever be in the raft of God. The raft of God is beyond your understanding and mine. And the Bible even describes it, but it still is not nothing in comparison to what it will be to live through that. And God says, you better pray that you're worthy to escape that. Now somebody said, well, if I don't go in the rapture, I'll just get my head. You can't even go to church. You'll give your head? Oh, I wouldn't take that, Mark. That spirit will be so prevalent in the land. There will be so much fear in the land. You'll take that, Mark, and be glad you took it. You can disagree with me all you want to, but it doesn't matter. If you can't stand for God in the hour we're living in, you sure can't stand later down the road. Amen? Amen? Come here, Ryan. If I can't whoop Ryan, and I can't, <laughs> strike that from the record. <laughs> but anyhow, if I can't handle Ryan, come here, Brother Tim. How in the God's world am I going to handle him? Hello? If I can't overcome this battle, how am I going to overcome this battle? Then I can get Brother Terry. I can get a whole bunch of you guys. Somebody shout amen. amen. Now, if it's ever time to get your heart fired, somebody ought to catch on fire. Amen. Somebody ought to catch on fire. Amen. I'm talking about a fire. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm talking about a revival. Thank hallelujah. you, guys. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, watch this. Pray that you're worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. Now, Revelation chapter 6 and verse 17 says, Who shall be able to stand in that day or in the raft of God. Nobody. Nobody can stand against the anger of God. Amen, Brother Wayne. So when you and I think that if you ever got concerned about yourself, you need to be concerned right now. And all this pettiness and this childishness that you've been saved for 35 years with, and you're piffed, puffed, 
You need to take my hand. Well, if it's that valuable, I think I'll start charging for it. Somebody shout amen. amen. Well, they start church two minutes after table. If you know the load sometimes in the situations and try to deal with somebody right before church, you sew a button on it and button it. Amen, boy. I'm too old and I'm too close to heaven to act and fool with that nonsense. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, are we going to be worthy to escape these things? Are you, are you even thinking about the Bible says, watch and pray always that you be counted worthy to escape. Because there's coming a time when that rapture takes place and you're not rapture ready, you're going to be lost. Amen. That's why sometimes when I, I, I come to church and I grip my teeth and I'd stand there. 30 minutes, it felt like you was taking a sledgehammer and beating my feel, my feet. But I thought it was worthy enough to come to church for. Not give y'all some kind of excuse. Then Thursday, you're sitting at Walmart. You, you got Brother Mickey's picture. You got Brother Mickey up there. This young, you got him? Put him up. This young man, I know him well, goes to Brother Mitchell Bunch's church, always outside helping park cars. He's always got this big smile on his face. He, he, he's just a fine fella, fine guy. And, and, and he's he just an awesome guy. Can you put it up? Okay, that's fine. Just want to make sure you do it. And uh, uh, this past week, he went to church on Sunday, and uh, he didn't realize that Sunday was his last day at the house of the Lord. He's 55 years old. 55 years old. He walked out to feed his animals Thursday morning. They were going to go to church Thursday night. Thursday morning, he went out to feed his animals. Some of y'all recognize him when they can get the picture up there. And uh, he went to feed his animals, and his wife, her name is Jean, and she heard him down the basement getting in the corn or the chicken feed and all that kind of stuff. And I think he maybe had a goat or something, uh, what it all was. And she heard him down there, and, and then uh, she didn't hear him for a while. Because most of the time when he got his feet, he'd go out in the yard and go, chick, chick, you know, and here, goat, come on, Billy, or ever what, you know. And she didn't hear anything. And she looked out in the backyard. And there he laid, face first. 55 years old, massive heart attack. Before she got to him, his lips was done blue on his face. His heart burst him at 55 years old. You don't know when you're going to die. You don't know when you're going to leave this world. Now, Mickey didn't have a chance to ask nobody to forgive him. He didn't have a chance to ask God to help him. One breath, and he was gone. A friend of mine raised his hands in church, said, there ain't a pain in my body. And before he got the, the, the last breath out of him, he was on the ground dead. He died with probably $35 million in the bank. Maybe more. And he raised his hands, said, there ain't a pain in my body. And was dead before those words were out that into your ears. See, you better get ready for the ready because it's going to happen one way or the other. Now, I'm not depressing you. I'm just trying to tell you the facts of life that we need to wake up and be concerned about the real things. Go to Proverbs chapter 24 this morning. We're going to look at some lives this morning. So you pray for his wife. She is, she's in shock. You know what that's like, Sister Minnie? Sister Phyllis? Yeah, some of y'all that's lost your loved one, you know what that's like. Amen. The Bible says this. I went by the field. This was Solomon. I went by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of the man. I want you to look at these words. Look, look how he, he puts these words in his place. I went by the field, the labor of that man. What, what This field represented who he was. It represented his life. I went by the field 
or I look at the life of the slothful man. And by the vineyard of the man, and that word void, look, look, look at this word void this morning. It means, in the book of Genesis, it means without form. It means chaos. It means emptiness. And that's really what it means. That when you look at this, you can't understand this man. Because he's so void of what? Been able to do what he knows to do. That's what it means. Go ahead, next verse, please. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns. Now, here, here, here's where the man come in to, to play this morning. and he, or, or Solomon did. And he began to say, he went by the man that was slothful and the man void of understanding. And, he, and when he went by the field and he looked at his place and he saw it as that we saw that house, it was all grown over with thorns. How many of the devil th sows thorns? Good seed falls among the thorns. And thorns will always choke out the things of God. I have no trouble growing weeds in my yard. Does anybody have w trouble with weeds growing in your yard? I have trouble for grass growing in it. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. And lo, it's all grown over with thorns, and nettles had covered the face thereof. This wonderful ground that was able to produce and to make a profit and to do these things. And the face of it was all grown over and the stone wall, the protection that kept out what needed to be kept out was all broke down. This is a man's life. All this he's talking about is a man's life. He's talking about how he does things. Can I get a witness in here? Amen. Amen. So when you look at this, we're talking about a person's life. The Bible said they sowed the, the wheat. The good man sowed good seed. But while men slept, the enemy came. He didn't shake my hand. That was enemy come then. He, well, I'm not going back there. They ain't friendly. It's too hot. It's too cold. You say, well, you, you, you're, you're sort of acting child. That's the way they act. I want you to understand how they do it. And if you sit and listen to that propaganda, you'll start getting hard feelings against me also. And you don't even know it's true. And if you can believe that, you can believe anything. Man. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nettles and covered the face thereof, and the stone wall was broken down. Next verse. How many of y'all want to be ready? Then I saw it. I looked at it. I considered it well. He just didn't look at it and glance over it. He looked at it and he pondered and he thought about it. And he received instructions. If, listen, if you can't look at a man going to hell this morning and get some instructions from him, it ought to scare you to death because you could be in the same boat. Or maybe on the same boat, just on a different side. That's good preaching, brother. Saying, Lord, Lord, going to church don't save you. Talking religious won't save you. Preaching won't save you. <laughs> I'm not leaving me out of the boat. I looked at it. And this is the thing. I looked at You know what? A fool is always right in his own eyes. Well, you know what I mean? Always just put up, your, put up a concern. You're a fool. You don't need nothing else? You're a fool. I don't call you. That's what the Word of God called you. Now, my granny taught me about it. She just smacked my mouth if I call somebody a fool. Wasn't she, Timmy? Wasn't she, David? My granny, boy, she, she, she was part dial, part this, part that. She was enough part of it. She would part you. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. My mom's afraid of birds. She's afraid of feathers. She's afraid of feathers. Scares her to death. Me and that wild brother of mine back there, David, Paul Timmy, he was always a good kid. He know to be good. Somebody shout amen. But me and David found a bird. He was dead. We found a bird. We know mama was scared of feathers. We brought that in the house. 
Mama. Mama went ballistic. She ran out the back door and we went after her. We thought that was the funniest thing in the world, chasing Mama with it. And her hollering, ah, ah. And her, her hollering, Mama. She, uh, uh, my mama's mama. Mama. She called her mama. 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 And man, we after her just like a dog after a, a, a coon. Somebody shout amen. We thought that was the funniest thing. And finally, she got to granny. And the fun was over. She should have beat David to death and didn't. Somebody shout hallelujah. Talk me into doing something like that. Somebody shout hallelujah. But, but God is good. Somebody shout God is good. I saw it. I looked at it. This bothers me. One of the hardest. Listen, preaching is the easiest thing I can ever do. It's trying to take care of you. What's the hard part? And your soul to get you to hear me and to get you to understand me. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's a hard job to try to keep us together. Keep us, amen, on the same page. Everything going. Praying, seeking. God this, God that. Help us all. Amen. And, uh, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, Lord, and, and sometimes I see people, and God lets me see things that sometimes I wish I didn't see. God forgive me for saying that. But I see their life, and I realize their life is just coming apart. And they'll holler, I'm okay. I'm okay. You don't tell me nothing. I'm all right. I don't have to do all that stuff you're saying. <laughs> and I know what's going to happen. I didn't see it. It's coming apart. It's coming apart. Amen, Bo Wayne. And I looked and I saw it well. And I looked on it and I received. I, I, I got some understanding. God, I, I, I've had great confidence in them people. And Lord, if that can happen to them... It can happen to me. All it takes is me just to get a little bitterness, unforgiveness, start acting ugly, get real whirly, get more of the world on my mind than I do God. I'd rather be yonder than here. Next thing you know, amen. Now, Back it up, Daniel. Back it up. I got to, amen. I, I, I won't bring this out as God brought it. Then I looked, or I saw, and I considered it well. Ba back it up one more. I want to show this to you again. No, it was all grown over with thorns and with nettles and covered the face thereof, and the stone wall was broken down. Y'all see that dilap dilapidated house there a minute ago? It's it pitiful, wasn't it? It should have been like that. It should have been like that. You bought a house like that, didn't you? I think one of y'all all grown up when you bought it. But you didn't stay that way, did it? No, sir. You went out with a chainsaw and a pliers and cutters and everything else, didn't you? Or was it you that done it? <laughs> somebody, somebody shout him. And he cleaned it up. It's a beautiful place now. Beautiful place. Took a lot of hard work, though, didn't it? Took a lot of hard work. Somebody shout amen. Took a lot of hard work. So see, here's the thing. You can't be at ease in your Christian life and, it, and everything just be good. It takes work. It takes sacrifice. It takes commitment. I had an excuse for over a month not to come to church. I had to say, Sister Jean, broke legs, broke arms, broke knees, broke back. But they had a turner with a sheet. But you know, on Sunday morning where I come, I'd leave her at 9 o'clock. I'd drive to church, and I'd preach to you folks. And I'd come out here at a quarter to 11 or a quarter to 12, and I'd fly back to Somerset, and I'd stay all evening with her. Then I'd get in my car at 6 o'clock, and I'd fly back here as hard as I get because I have a responsibility too. Oh, it'd been easy to make an excuse. Well, she ain't here. I ain't coming. Hello? Had a guy tell me that one time. He said, I can't go to church. My wife won't go with me. He went to Florida and left his wife. <laughs> Don't make sense. Hello, church. And you know what? Then they, can't, they can't believe I'm a fool enough to believe that stuff. Just because I don't say I'm bad, don't mean I believe it. Well, I, I figured we'd be shouting, but now, not really. <laughs> How many of those think God's still good? Now watch this. Now watch this. Now watch this. 
Now, go on, Daniel, verse 33. That was all gone. Then I saw it. Now look, I saw what? I saw the nettles. I saw the thorns. I saw the wall broke down. I saw that it was in a in, in a dilapidated state. It, it was a mess. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All right. and, and how did it get like that? Talk to me, church. How did it get like that? You know what the word sleep means? Unconcern. What it means? It means you've been unconcerned. It means just not aware. Somebody shout hallelujah. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. I wish everybody would go into heaven. Oh, my God, I wish everybody would go into heaven. But they won't. And I mean, it's not God's will for nobody to die. Now, so shall thy poverty you know what that word poverty means this morning? It means, well, look at this as I begin to try to bring all this that I could bring out this morning. It means, this poverty means alike. It means something that will be insufficient for you. In the time that you need it, amen, as you would sow a garden and, and you would reap the goodness of that garden. But some people can tomatoes and they can beets and they'll, they'll, they'll beer their potatoes. And the old folks used to do that really much. I know what I'm saying. They'd, they'd beer their potatoes in the ground and different things. And they would be ready, amen, because they didn't have halogens and they didn't have food stamps and they didn't have a card. And the government didn't give them anything. If they didn't get, prepare for it, they would starve in the wintertime. Now, I'm going to tell you something. It's hard to feed me and Central Jean sometimes. I can't imagine Seth. <laughs> and I'll, I'll be honest with you. Love him to death. I thank the world. I think he was my son. I thank you. Amen. But that boy can eat more than this, half this church can. Braxton. Braxton. Yeah, not, not, not uh, Seth. <laughs> Seth ain't good. He don't get it. <laughs> he eats it before he gets home. <laughs> Somebody shout Amen. We go to the house after church. Isaac goes over there, him and Canyon, and man, they and I are cooking. They're having grilled cheese. They're making uh, this. They're making that. They're fixing this. They're fixing that. I go to the refrigerator. I go get me something. <laughs> then they thought that one better. They brought KK. <laughs> I don't eat much. <laughs> you still love me, KK? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> No, she don't eat that much. She's like a bird. She just picks at it. That, that make you feel better? Huh? She likes vegetables. That's where our peas and corn went to. <laughs> but anyhow, somebody shout hallelujah. No. Amen. I told her, I said, if you remember Isaac, you're supposed to get used to this. <laughs> Man, so shall thy poverty come. I said, you ain't just marrying Isaac. You marrying me. You marrying Gene. You marrying Daniel. You marrying Jeannie. And if Isaac marries her, oh God, he's marrying Shelly. He's marrying Seth. That's right. Oh, you gonna have a miserable marriage. God, I'm preaching good. Y'all just ain't here. Come on now. Hallelujah. God's good. Amen. So your poverty, your want, your like. Oh my God. You'll get up in the middle of the night and you're hungry. There, there's nothing there. You know what brought that? Little sleep, little slumber. You ever see people wake up in a real hard battle after a while? They've been sleeping, slumbering, not coming to church, not, amen, just playing church. Then boom, the big storm hits. Guess what happens? They can't stand. I've had some big storms in my life. I've had some that, oh, my God, I didn't think I was going to make it through them. Anybody ever been up besides me? I'm talking about he wouldn't, he wouldn't seem to quit. That demon of hell was there. He said, there's battles, and I can fight battles all day long. Who do? Amen. But there's things in certain life the devil brings ever a power of hell he can against you, ever demonic force, and it surrounds you, and brother, he'll encamp around you. And if you ain't got the full of the Holy Ghost and the power of God and know how to pray and know how to cry out to God and seek the will of God and humble yourself before God and seek God, man, there 24 hours a day when you're diving down the road. Oh, God, help me. Uh, amen. When you're in the, in, when you're in the, in the restaurant eating, uh, but you're saying, oh, God, uh, I've got to have some help because that enemy uh, has come to destroy you. 
you. Uh, there's battles, there's little storms, uh, there's little showers, uh, but there's every one of us has a season that there's an enemy uh, and he means to destroy you. Can I get a witness in here? And brother, if you're not sincere with God and you still want to sleep and play, play around, that enemy will destroy you. He'll bring you to the place in your life that you don't even want to go back to church. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you this. If I go to church after three or four songs and I don't feel nothing at all, and I feel, amen, I'll start raising that hand and try to get, amen, maybe a little lightning will hit me. <laughs> Giving God something to work with. Y'all hear what I'm saying to you this morning? Give God a shout of praise. Amen. Your poverty shall come as one that travaileth. Amen. God, uh, help us this morning. Uh, help us this morning. Uh, help us this morning. Uh, God, I want my house. Uh, God, I don't want it to be grown up. Uh, God, I don't want it to be falling apart. Uh, God, I want a wise house. Somebody ought to give God another shout of praise. Uh, I don't want to be slothful. Uh, God, I don't want to be slothful this morning. Amen. You know what the word slothful means? It means, listen to this, it means, care, this is what the, the biblical definition means. Carelessness about the priorities of God. We want our yard immaculate. We want our car washed. We want to make all kinds of money. You can make all the money. You can go to hell with a fistful of money. And you can go there with your belly hungry too. I want you to understand that. But what are you putting before God this morning? Amen. It's like that snake over the door. We don't even recognize things around us. We're living in serious times. What the Lord was coming within the next month. And you're in the state you're in. Maybe, what, what, what if you're like Brother Mickey, you walk out your back door and you fall dead before you got a chance to say, oh, God, help me. 55 years old? That, that, that's too young. It's too young. I ain't got a promise of tomorrow. I ain't got a promise of the next breath. But I can tell you one thing, I'm ready to go. I can tell you that, and I know that. If I wasn't, I'd be right on that altar. My poverty will come on me. It's one that travaileth. How many of you ladies ever had a baby and travailed? Can you get rid of it? Can you just get rid of it? Let pain just go away because you don't want it? No. How many of y'all, when, when the pain started, you wasn't ready? I've got two women, three women. Bless y'all's bless hearts. Or as a want, as an armed man. Brother, I tell you, your soul's more important than anything in this world. You better take care of it. Because you only got one. You only got really one chance to appoint. Amen. How we make all these plans. We do all these things. God sets us. In a, amen. Let me tell you something. If you, if you want to take a job, somebody's offering you a job. It's going to take you away from church. You better leave that job alone. That's not but a, Oh, he's going he's to give good money. I'll pay plenty of tithes. If he's going to take you away from church, you better leave it alone. Somebody shout amen. amen. I know a guy that did that. Me and Brother Buddy knows him well. Amen. He was, he was scratching pennies. Little old nickel and dime jobs. God gave him a job paying, what, tw about $25 an hour. Good, good paying money. They kept him out of church a lot of times. Then one evening he, he started stopping at a little truck stop on his way back home. And the gal behind the register kept flirting with him. And beat his wall down. She got to flirting with him until she got in the truck with him. Everything fell apart. She leaves him after a while. He leaves his family and two kids. He calls her. Says, can I come home? I ain't got nowhere to go. 
She said, have you forgot? They sold our house at auction. We don't have a home. We don't have a car no more. I'm living with mama. Nothing left. Wants to come home when there's nothing left to go home. There ain't no home left. I looked in the mirror many times and said, God, how stupid can I be? Come on, somebody. Some of y'all need to look in the mirror. How stupid can you get? Well, I'm preaching. Just raise your hand and say, he's preaching good this morning. I've not had to fight these battles for this. Amen. But I want a fire of God in my soul. How many want God to put a fire in your soul this morning? How many wants God to put a fire in your soul this morning? Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. He got slothful. He got neglectful. Amen. He began to delay. He began to procrastinate. He began to sleep. He began to come, amen, unwilling to take his responsibility, amen, that God had placed in his life. And Solomon said, I see this man. I realize that this man, amen. Daniel, go to Proverbs Amen. Go to go to Proverbs chapter twelve and verse fifteen. Is this good preaching to anybody this morning? Pro- Proverbs twelve fifteen. The way of a fool is right. What? He that hearken unto counsel is what? what? Yeah, but preacher, you just don't know. I'm just telling you right there what the Bible says. Ain't what Wayne Key says. Ain't Wayne Key. They ain't got a thing to do with it. Go to Proverbs chapter 26, verse 12. Give God a shout of praise this morning. <laughs> Seeth thou a wise man in his own conceit. Seeth thou a man wise in his own conceit. There is more hope for a fool than him. That's what the Word of God says. When you're conceited and you're haughty and you're arrogant and nobody can tell you anything, you're worse than a fool. <laughs> I know y'all not that way, but I'm just trying to tell you. How many of you know somebody's like that? Amen. Now watch this. Amen. Go to Matthew chapter 21 and verse number 10. I want to show you a couple more things here. What you and I need to do, I, I've got more to preach on. This was Jesus. When he came in Jerusalem, all the city was moved with him, saying, who is this? Who is this guy, Jesus? Who is this guy? Man, he ain't like the scribe. He ain't like a Pharisee. He ain't this little ear tickling, this holier than thou. Amen. The whole city of Jerusalem was moved when this man came in because he come in the power and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. How many of that we need the power and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost back in our churches again? How many of we need to move a God? Uh, not to sit here and hear something ear tickling, uh, but something that your soul would catch on fire. My God, are you concerned enough for your soul that you want to say, oh, God, put a fire in me? Next verse, please, hurry. I've got, a, I've got scripture. I'll put up our wall of goes. Don't stop. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Keep going. Hallelujah. Amen. And Jesus went out of the temple. Amen. Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out them that sold. Now, in the book of John, chapter number 2, the Bible says that Jesus made a whip. And he drove them out of the temple. There's some things that need to be drawn while you're alive because it'll cause you troubles. It's a thief in your house. It's something in there that will cause you shame down the road. Amen. Oh, that little monk, meek Jesus. No, he planted a cord of, of a whip. And he had a look on his face. When he went in there, excuse me, he began to throw over tables. Yep. Amen. <laughs> he began to put the trot on them. <laughs> he said, you've made my house a house of thieves. You made a, bit, a den of robbers. You come in here, amen, and I know, listen, listen, and what, what, what those men should have been in an honest way, amen, the Romans or different people would have a, a Roman currency and it would have the, a, a, a picture of, of the emperor and he was claiming to be God. And the, they, they wouldn't take that into the temple treasury because of these images on the on, on the coins uh, amen because they, the 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 caesar was god so what they would do they would change it into temple money but what they would do they'd say 
for your 50 cents, I'll give you 20 cents. And they were thieves. Man would take care of his little lamb and they would bring it to Jerusalem. And then when they would bring it in, they wouldn't accept it. And they would sell them one of their lambs and take their lamb and turn around and sell that lamb that they wouldn't take because they said there's something wrong with it and sell it to the next guy. And they made the house of God a den of thieves. We've about done that today in America. Can I get a witness in the house? If we ever drove out some things in our lives, uh, amen, that's causing nettles and thorns, uh, amen, I'm preaching to somebody this morning, I want to go to heaven. Uh, I'm not looking to play church. Uh, I'm not looking to have just a good time. Uh, I want a fire in my soul. Uh, I want a fire in my bones. Uh, I want the fire of God uh, that I'm awake uh, and I realize the Lord is coming uh, or I'm going to die and i got to get ready. Uh, I've got to meet God. And I listen, amen, and you think you got Paul. I got to meet God for me, and I got to meet God for you. David Keith, I'll stand for you in God's judgment. Sister Barbara, I'll stand for you in God's judgment. I'll try to get out of you. <laughs> but I'm going to stand for her in judgment. I'm going to have to give an account for this church. I've got a double woe. That's why the, a man of God should be worthy of double honor according to your Bible and your scriptures. Amen. And I also got a double woe on me in the scriptures. This thing is more than just, oh, look, he preaches. <laughs> Hold up more than that. Can I get a witness in the house? And you ought to be concerned. Amen. I prepare and prepare messages to feed you and to stir you and inspire you. And if you ain't even got enough concern about to come to the house of God, something wrong in your life. Amen. When you can go to work on Thursday, but your toes hurting on Wednesday. Or I got to stay home. I've had them tell me they had to stay home and wash clothes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm like Bob Harrington. I know that I was saved. Because I would have loved to have shook them. And, and I've been the washing machine. Somebody shout hallelujah. Don't y'all look at me holier than thou. Amen. Now, won't you just come and say, I didn't want to come. I just didn't have no desire to come. I just was too busy, and I just don't want to come. Instead of making some lying excuse to lie about it. I think it ought to be given a hand this morning. Or oh, better than that. Anybody got a cell phone? Hey, what you doing? Oh, nothing. You going to church tonight? I thought I wouldn't either. I just wanted to see if you was going. <laughs> yes, sir, I'm a going. You better be there. <laughs> but we, I, I've got them little clicks that does that. You going to church tonight? No, I've been tired. I, nothing worked out for me today. I asked that lady when she stuck that needle in my feet. I said, is this supposed to hurt? First time she brought that out there. I said, what you going to do? She said, I'm going to put them in your feet. But no, this doesn't hurt bad enough. I didn't really care at the moment to a point. God is hurting bad. I got where I could I had to sleep with my feet hanging over the bed. I couldn't even lay my heels on the, on the bed, on the mattress. It's true. My toes feel like that fire. I've come prepared to preach to you folks. I called, no, I don't feel like preaching tonight. God told me that one time in the tent. He said, boy, I like to preach out of this tent. I said, come help me put it up. No, ain't going to help you. I said, you ain't going to preach on it either. Amen. I didn't tell him behind his back. I told him his face. One thing about it, nobody can go and say, I'll say something behind your back, I won't tell you your face. I try to be meek. I try to be gentle. I try to tell you how good you are. But, boy, when you need it, I'm going to share you. That's right. Because you got some bugs under that thing. Brother, little sister Rhonda, and I, Stanley was his name, wasn't it? 
And Stanley, the collie dog. Sandy. Sammy. Sammy. Stanley. Stanley. I wish y'all talk up and speak it right. I ain't never been wrong. Have you? Huh? <laughs> you figure that now. <laughs> Stanley. Good collie dog, wasn't he, Brother Lewis? Big, thick mane. He was a lassie. He is a lassie. Something happened under his mane. They didn't know it. Flies got in it. And laid eggs called maggots. And the maggots killed the little beautiful dog. If they could just lift it up in time. Seen the maggots. That's nasty. A whole lot of things are. Jesus went in the temple of God. And cast them out that sold him and brought in the temple. And overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. Look at this, folks. Look at this. Next verse, please. Hurry. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Somebody shout hallelujah. Got to go. Hallelujah. But God's good. Somebody shout God is good this morning. Somebody shout God is good this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said unto them, it is written, my house shall be called what? But you made it What? My God, give God a shout of praise in here this morning. Come on, give God another shout of praise. Come on, give God a shout of praise in here. Go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Amen. We're going to preach a while for a couple more minutes. I'm going to say God's a good God. And he healed the blind, the lame, and in the temple, and he healed them. Folks, that's what I want to see the power of God move again. How many of y'all want to see the power of God? Amen. How many of y'all want to see the power of God move? How many of y'all want to do more than play church? How many of y'all want to do more than just run around and you've got to have it your way or no way? Amen. Amen. Folks, I don't want it my way. I want the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, if Robin's a singing, if Sister Audra's singing, uh, if Brother Calvin gets up and he starts singing, I want to get with it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Listen to this. Where, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will like him a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Look at this. Look at how they're going back to the same thing in Proverbs. Uh, amen. Whosoever hears my what sayings. Uh, and what does he do? Uh, he does them. He acts on it. He gets up and acts on it. Here was the thing. Here was the thing with, with, with Abraham. Amen. God said, take your son, your only son. And the next morning, he rose up early and he took Isaac and the fire and the wood. He was obeying. Faith has a result. Faith has action. And if you don't obey the word of God, you're not obeying anything. Thank you, son. Who's your everybody saying? I'll build like a wise man. I'm going to read this quickly because I'm going to go preach on the wise man for a minute. Go ahead. Next verse. Well, about, about a half to. And the rains descended. Let me tell you something. Have I got a kid in here? Is there a kid left in here this morning? But that's, yeah, but he, he's too small for. <laughs> I, she won't come, I don't think. She won't come down here. Now, watch this. Watch this. Son, don't listen to that old fool. He's preached that till he believes it. He, he's preached that till he, he's convinced of it. And I, I've been here and it's not rained. I don't even know what rain really is. I don't understand what God's going to destroy the earth. Look how beautiful. Look at everybody. They're just going to and fro. They're minding their own business. They're planting. They're eating. They're sowing. They're drinking. They're marrying. They're giving in marriage. They're having kids. They're just, look, nobody's concerned about this. Am I a fool this morning? And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and they beat on that house, and it fell not. For it was founded on a rock. Let me tell you what that rock is. That rock took some time to dig down to that. It took some effort. It took commitment. It took a lot of sweat to get down to the rock. Is your Christianity worth anything? Is it worth a little prayer? 
Now, I always ask him, could I use him? Because he sits on the front pew. <laughs> Is it worth a little stopping and seeking God? Is it worth more than just being funny, Matt? He dug down, but the storm came. The storm came. The rain ascended. The floods came. The winds beat. And he didn't fall. Boy, he's founded on a rock. It took a lot of time. It took extra time. But here's the guy that's void of understanding. He just don't consider anything. Next verse, please. And everyone that heareth these sins of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a, what's that word foolish man again? That word foolish is in the Bible a lot of times. You ever been foolish, Brother Wayne? Yeah. And he built his house on the sand. He built a house. He put good windows in it. Put a nice roof on it. Got master carpenters, got craftsmen carpenters to lay it out and to fix it. But he said, it'll take too long if I have to dig down. And it's awful hard digging. Brother My, M M uh, Michael this morning said, you see the trees down, Michael? He said, how are you going to get them stumps up? I said, I got shovels. And I said, me and you going to dig. I said, we're going to dig them up. And Brother Michael took two deep breaths and an old me and all, and all at the same time. Because he knows what we could do it, didn't you, Michael? No, we're not going to do that. Because some of you guys are already planning on what you're going to do that week. <laughs> but see, it's too much work to dig them stumps up. But you know, old people dug them up. Burn them up. But the day, no, too much time. Y'all preach a while with me, would you? And if he said, I'm going to build it on the sand. It's easier. Somebody shout, it's easier. It's easier to go to church over yonder where they don't preach like this. It's easier to go somewhere else where that you just fit in with the crowd. It's easier, isn't it? I just want to be prepared. I'm not saying you're not. I'm just saying this. I just want to make sure I am. Can I get a witness? Listen, this is a close. Amen. Oh, man. How many of y'all want to see your instructions this morning? Listen, listen to this foolish man. He said, uh, I can be on my house in half the time you can, preacher. I can be on me a church and get more people than you can after all these years, preacher. And they can. Somebody shout Amen. And preacher, I want to tell you something. It'll cost me less if I build on sand. Oh, it's okay. But if you've ever been to the ocean, you know that water and sand don't really agree together. Can I get a witness in here? The foolish man says this. It, it, something could go wrong, but it probably won't. I discerned a man's marriage at solid at Rowena. And I preached to him that Sunday morning because God told me to preach to him about his marriage and his home. They sat there and they laughed at me and sneered and made faces the whole time I was preaching. I happened to go to the restaurant 
that evening, and I was turning in. They were walking across in front of me, and he reached over, and never forget the day I die, got her by the hand, and he turned, and he looked right in that windshield at me. That man's been divorced three times since that. You don't mock God. His marriage could have been saved that day if he had listened. But because he chose to know more than the Spirit. Now, Brother Wayne ain't that smart. But when the Spirit shows me something, buddy, it's right. And I've been saved long enough to know the difference. Can I get a witness? That foolish man said this as they get ready to prepare the music. That foolish man said, man, 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 man. Look at me. I told you. Look at my house. Can y'all see it? Can you see it? See that pretty house? Pull up a sandcastle, Daniel. You got one there. Man, look. I've done it better. My house even looks better than yours. And I did it in half the time, half the sweat, and half the cost. But he wasn't planning on one thing called a storm, called life. As I close this morning, when you go to the doctor, he said, Mr. Loy, it looks like that we got some bad results. Uh, Mr. Cooper, things aren't looking good. You have cancer, or you've got a disease that's incurable. All of a sudden, that world ain't the same, is it? Y'all hear me this morning? You can run away if you want to, but it still is exactly the way it is. Can I get a witness? They thought I had stones. I do have stones in my kidneys. And one of the doctors said, they look like they're dancing in there. That's all was her words. I said, well, we need to calm them down and make them something else instead of Pentecostal. <laughs> but they said, that's not your problem. That's not your problem. You got calcium buildup and blockages in your arteries that goes to your legs. It's very serious. If they rupture, you'll die. But I keep coming on to church. I don't believe in God to heal me. Got nothing wrong with the doctor. But man, if you've got a problem, you better get in church. If you've got sickness, you better get in church. And I'm going to tell you something. And I love you to death, son. I love you to death. But I, and God loves you more than I do. I thank the world of you. I really do. Now, God knows my heart. If I lie, I'll go to hell for lying. I thank the world of you. I always have. But God loves you more. And if God has to get you flat on your back that you can't do it but look up to save your soul, he's willing to allow that to happen. Amen. And sometimes it takes people getting flat on their back that nothing else in this world will work until they say, God, I need to repent. Now, I don't know how stubborn you want to be, but I don't want to be stubborn against God. I don't want to lay flat on my back knowing that I'm the cause of me land right there. The house either built on a rock or it's built on a sand. But one of the two, my house is rock or it's sand. I'm not just preaching to you. I'm preaching to me. I don't be a foolish man this morning. How many believe that Jesus is coming? How many wants to pray God sent us a revival? God sent us a fire in our soul. God put a fire in my soul. Robin sung that song this morning. And I thought, oh, God, that's what we had to have. God put a fire in my soul. Would you stand to your feet this morning just for a moment and say, God put a fire in my soul. God put a fire in my spirit. I got a young preacher man making all kinds of excuses not to go to church right now. Oh, man, he's in a storm of his life. And if he does not, if he does not get a hold of God, he'll quit going to church. He's preached to others. 
but he himself will become a castaway. I want to ask you a question this morning. What kind of condition is your house in? What kind of condition? And I, I can't answer that unless God shows me. But what kind of condition is your house this morning? What kind of condition is your house in? Amen. What does it look like? Is it all grown over? Is the wall broke down? Say, I want God to heal you, son. I want God to heal you. It bothers me. Amen? It bothers me. Because I know God can. I know God will. But I'm not here for a miracle. I'm here to be committed. And I want to see miracles. Several here need a miracle. But I want to serve God if I never get a miracle. I want to be committed to God if I never get a chill bump. I want to be sold out this morning. How many of y'all want to be sold out this morning? Young people, I love you to death. But I know what the devil's going to do to you when you get out there. I know what he's going to do to you. I know. I know. I really do. I know. Knows the devil's like that. Savannah, you never thought it, would you? You can tell these young people, you can tell these young kids, can't you? Can I get a witness in here? Without him, I could do nothing. I want you to sing just a minute, Robin. Without him. I'd surely fail. What kind of conditions your house in this morning? This altar is open if you want to come. If you want to stand there. But let God touch your life this morning. Let God minister to you this morning. How lost I'd be. Sing it with me. Jesus, slow. Oh, Jesus, do you know me? Oh, wait. Would you say, God, put a fire in my soul? Can you raise your hand and say, God, put a fire in my soul this morning? God put a fire in my soul this morning. Come on. It ain't about nobody but you this morning. Or you say, well, I'm, I'm as good as so-and-so. That ain't going to help you none. Oh, raise your hands. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Come on, real softly. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the conviction of God. God. Help us this morning. If you're lost, this altar's open. If you're cold and indifferent, there are some fantastic folks in here. You love God. You're here every Sunday. You're here faithfully. But what kind of condition is your house in? Folks, it wasn't raining when Noah built the ark. It wasn't raining. You better get ready. Somebody shout, you better get ready. Sing your song. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God, this young man, God, just want to know what that old slothful spirit. But God, right now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, God, put a fire. God, let the fire of God burn in his soul this morning. In the name of Jesus, every one of us, come from my shell. Hey. In the name of the Lord. God, the stirring of the Holy Ghost. 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 God, every one of these guys. God, the stirring of the Holy Ghost. Come on, praise him. Come on, sir. When I need a friend, I go to the rock. Come on. Come on, when you raise your hands on this tabernacle and say, God, 
Shit, shall it rock of revival. God, shit, shall it rock of the Holy Ghost. Oh, God, touch our hearts. Touch our hearts this morning, God. Touch us this morning. Father, by the power of God. Listen to me. How many weeks I preached you the truth this morning? How many weeks I preached you just the truth? Because I don't want you to wait down the road and realize it's way too late. Brother Johnny, have you ever got the wrong kind of sand or mortar that wouldn't work or wouldn't hold? May I say it? Got to tear it all back apart, don't you? Got to tear it all back apart. But I don't want the wrong stuff building with this morning. How many of y'all want to get a hold of God this morning? Young people, let me tell you one thing. I've only got four or five in here right here, but I'm the best friend you'll ever have. And that's the truth. That's the truth. That's the truth. Go to the rock of my salvation. Go to the stone that the builders rejected. Run to the mountain. The mountain stands by me. Well, it's all around me. Rock, I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go, I go to the rock. Give the Lord a shout of praise right now, would you? Come on, give God a shout of praise. Woo! Who do I talk Woo! to? Who do I talk to? When there's no one else to listen. Well, who do I lead? Who do I lead? I got a real God in this house. Hallelujah! Somebody praise Him. I go to the rock. Well, who do I turn to? When there's nobody else to turn to, who do I talk to? Well, who do I talk to? When nobody wants to listen, well, who do I lean? Who do I lean on? When there's no foundation stable, I go to the rock. How many like to have a Holy Ghost revival tonight? How many y'all want a Holy Ghost revival tonight? Now, everybody like to have a good service as long as you don't do nothing for it. But when you gotta pray and get a hold of God and get stirred and come in here tonight with a fire in your soul, you'll have a church revival. Somebody praise him one more time. Hallelujah, it's 12 o'clock. Take it one more time. I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. I run to the mountain. The mountain stand by me. When the hurts all around me is sinking sand. On that solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter. When I need a friend. I go to the rock. Tell your neighbor, we're going to the rock tonight. Isn't God good today? I know one thing. Some of y'all look like you got your yard mowed. Some of y'all pulling up weeds right now. But God's good. Amen. 
want to say it, and I forgot it a while ago. Forgive me. It's good to have Sister Clara's friend uh, with us this morning for his first time. God bless you. Thank you for being with us this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody shout tonight. tonight.